Hi you guys, it's me, Marcy Lamberson. And today we are going to be working from inspiration from online. And I know we all should have our own individual ideas, but sometimes you're looking around and trying to think of just what hits you, just what do you wanna make? One of the places that I go as a sculptural artist is online, of course. And you know, for sculpture, holiday ornaments are a great way to get some ideas. It's November, and you know what? I, I tried to think hard, what would you want to see? Probably not a turkey. And I thought, what about Thanksgiving would make a good bead? I mean, we probably don't want mashed potatoes either, or the turkey itself. So I thought, how about pies? So I went to a couple of the places online and I saw some cherry pie Christmas ornaments. Well, yes, they're for Christmas, but boy, I think they work great for Thanksgiving too in the month of November. So today we are gonna make cherry pie slices as beads. And I think it's gonna be fun and really quite easy. So if you hang on a sec, I'll turn my camera around and we can get started. Hang on. Okay, let me set it into its slot. I think we've got it here. And I just need to double check with my hands what's covered. Okay, so let me show you the picture that I found online. Here is a cherry pie ornament. And of course, we're not gonna make the exact one, but it kind of gives us an idea. You can see the cherries look like they have some dimension to them. And I particularly like the lattice work on it. And of course, a crimped crust. And I happen to make pies myself, so I'm rather partial to these things. Something that it's possibly missing is if we want to make it with whipped cream or a la mode. Oh man, now I'm thinking about Thanksgiving and what I need to make for it. But anyhow, let's get started. We can see that what we need are just a few colors. Let me put this down and I'll pull out. We need a cherry pie red. And don't forget a lot of times your reds end up looking a little darker when you use them. So I picked one, of course, thinking, yes, it will darken, and it's got some translucency to it. And then I have a crust, which I'll use, oh, dark ivory, I think will work just fine. And so I have a stringer of it and the full rod, the bottom crust and the stringer. And then for tools, we have some pretty simple ones that we need, very few really. We're probably going to need a marver, and I've got my Cote marver that I love so much. And you can see all of the wonderful attributes in a lot of my other videos, so I won't go into those now. My didymiums with my magnifiers on them that I love, and very strong magnifiers. I have my brass stump shaper that's very old, and I talk about it in a lot of the videos, but it's got a nice sharp edge, and I never know when I'm going to use it, so I always show it. And then sometimes I use this tool, which is a slotted paddle. And if you don't have one of these, there are other tools that are similar to these or that would work in a similar way. What I do is I bring my mandrel up through this, and it evens up edges and stuff like that. And you can do that just with your marver or with other tools, but this is a tool that I particularly like. And we might need a pair of tweezers or needle nose pliers or something like that if we're crimping the edges. So I've got that one out also. Let's get started then. The one other thing that I thought that we could use, but we're gonna skip it this time, is possibly some transparent clear glass. And that would be, if I were working with a more opaque red, I would consider encasing a little bit of it 
and then it would show some definition between it. If I wanted some dots at the end around the edges, it might help keep your dots uh, looking a little bit more cherry and glaze looking. So you can do that if, if that's something you want to do, but I think we're going to skip it this time and go simpler. The other thing that I change that I normally do because, to be honest with you, I've been making cherry pies for quite a few years now, both in real life and in glass. Um, is that I always do lattice work on them, on cherry pies. And this is commercial dark ivory stringer that I've happened to have for a while. So I'm using it, but just pull it on the thicker side. It's a little bit easier to work with. Okay, so got my mandrel. And what we're essentially going to do is to make a cone and press it, and then we're going to add the crust to it after that. So let's start with a red cone. Well, actually, let's start with heating the mandrel and then the red cone. <laughs> mm -hmm. We might go to plan B with another rod of glass if this continues. Well, here you go. You see, it doesn't just happen to you. It happens to all of us. Exploding glass rods. So if, you know, this is a good learning tool. If I knew that this was going to happen, what's something I could have done? If you guessed preheat the rod, you would be right. Because that really does help a lot. I would have popped it into my kiln and then pulled it out. But now you can see it happening to me. And I went around and I took the end of my rod, which was warm, and just picked up a little bit of the, the little pieces that shot off. Because I don't know about you, but I really do hate to lose glass. Okay, so I think we're okay now. If we aren't, we'll go to plan B. But let's try this. <laughs> we will get this done. So if I were picking an easy red to work with, which is not the one that I have right now, I would say that if you go with an effetre red opaque, you would have an easiest time with it an easier time than this breaking off. And you notice what I do is I try to catch the edges that are breaking onto the existing bead and just to add it onto that. So as it breaks like that, I just it's already sticking onto the hot glass, so it's easier just to heat it and melt it in. Yes, it's a little bit of a pain, but I'm this far and I already started recording, so we're just going to go with that. Does it make you feel any better that it happened to somebody else that you know? Yeah, I know. I don't wish it for anybody, but it does happen. It's kind of a fact of life that once in a while you get rods that just don't want to behave, and this one especially in public does not. So depending upon how much, how wide you want your uh, cone to be, that's how much you will heat and put on. I want this to be a little bit wider, and don't forget when you press it, it's going to be, uh, it's going to get wider. However, I don't want to press it a whole lot because <laughs> I haven't sworn yet. You should be very proud of me. But I'm thinking about it, just not doing it. Um, I don't want to press it too far down because I don't want my pie too thin. If I press it too far down, I can always add another layer of glass. But I'm hoping that I can get enough of this rod onto here that we can continue and finish this tutorial.
and I don't get upset. You know, it doesn't it doesn't help things to get upset over this type of thing happening. You probably have had times where you just get frustrated when you have a rod that's popping all over the place and it was exactly the color that you wanted to use and you didn't have more or the rest of the same rods were doing the same thing to you. So, you know what? That's just what happens sometimes and it happens to all of us. So you just kind of keep pushing forward, right? And that's what we're doing today. We'll just push forward a little bit more. And I almost have enough glass on here, which I'm very thankful for. And I'm also thankful that I don't get upset too easily. Okay, we've got enough glass on here that we can heat things up. Thank goodness, huh? <laughs> That's what I get for choosing the prettiest red I could find. Okay, so let's heat this up. And we'll marvel it into a cone. And then we will shape it into a pie. And normally, you saw how much time it took for me picking up the pieces of glass and everything else. That took up quite a bit of time, but normally you just zip, zip, zip and get that cone done and away you go. It's fast. But let's melt this in really carefully. Take time to marver it the way we want it. It needs to get heated up a little bit more to move the way we want it to move. Then we'll get it. Doesn't deter me. Now I've got my mind on cherry pie. Something tells me I might be making a trip to the store after this and not for glass. Okay, let's keep going. We're marveling it. I want it more of a point, more of an angle. And this red is quite stiff, almost stiffer than the black that we normally use, which is interesting. So I'm heating it up, and you see my flame is pretty small. I like to work with a small flame. I have more control a lot of the time. Sometimes I turn it way up, but right now I hadn't planned on it. Okay, so see I'm marbling it on a bit of an angle to make more of a point and to push the other glass farther along the way. We're going to keep going. Heat it up more get a little bit better shape before we press it. And then we can still work it a little bit more after that, too. Let's get some more heat into this. See, it's pretty orange now, isn't it? Usually I don't work quite that hot, but this glass just wasn't moving as much as I wanted it to. Okay, so now let's press it down and heat it up some more. And because it angles out, of course, as a cone, when we press it, this part will get wider and this part will be less wide. And I see that I've got some little schmutzy things on it, which you can attack one of two ways. You can pull it off right now, which is probably the preferred way of doing it. But if it's embedded in there, you can make that area the bottom layer of, um, of the pie, and you can put the pie crust right over it, and that will take care of that too. But let's heat this in. We'll marvel it a little bit more, seeing that we poked at it. There we go. Okay, now we'll heat it up and press it together. It's a lot of work for a cherry pie. Okay, so it's nice and orange, although this is quite stiff. I'm just going to press it so it becomes even with the front area. And we'll look to see what shape of a pie we have here. I'm going to heat it back up, get the chill marks off of it, and 
then we'll look about any adjustments in shape. Okay, so I have my flat edge of my stump shaper. I can take it and just press it into more of a straight angle there. And I'll do the same on the other side. Make it a little bit more pie-like. Pressing, making it more into a piece of pie shape. And because we have the 332nd mandrel here, it doesn't get to be quite as sharp of a point. You could pull the top edge forward a little bit, which is what I often do. I'll show you what I do, and then we can push it back if we don't like it, or we can leave it going forward if we do like it. Keep just the edge and a little bit farther in, and you take a piece of cool glass. You can just kind of pull it forward a little bit more. bit more and I'm just pulling down the center a little bit and I'm not having it stick to the mandrel it's sticking out from the mandrel and I'm holding it upside down so it doesn't fall into the mandrel and I'm gently tapping it see how we can make it look pointier by just bringing out the glass a little bit farther can you see that so if you want it to look a little pointier that's what you do you just heat up your glass and pull a little bit of it forward, careful to not having it touch the mandrel. Gives it a little bit more of a pie shape, if that's what you want, the, the more specific acute angle on the front of it. Okay, so let's add some crust. We have some dark ivory, and this is old and the good stuff. Oh, I love a good dark ivory. It just has so much character to it. And what we're going to do is we're going to stripe it on the back. I like to stripe lengthwise usually, but you can stripe in any direction you want. And I'm heating up a little bit at a time and running it down. Keeping the whole bead warm. If it's not on exactly right, don't worry. You don't want to go over the edges, though, right? Because that's your pie crust you're putting on. And you don't want to put it on top of super hot glass. So while that's cooling, let's heat the front part and the side parts. And then what I do is I take my brass shaper you can use any tool that will flatten a little bit, and I'm heating just the ivory glass, and I'm just going to flatten it a little bit. We're just turning it more into a flat crust. I'm heating it up. Because there's some divots from where I striped it on, we want to flatten it, make it very crust-like. So I'm just gently rubbing the bottom to flatten it. See how it's more crust-like that way? We even got some of the brown on it. But we do need to get up to the sides, and that's partly where your ivory stringer comes in, because boy, that's going to make life easier for you. What I'm going to do is go around the hole, striping on the red part of the bead, and if it comes up just a little bit over this part, don't worry, because you have a press that you're putting on attach the whole thing. So see, I'm just adding it right along the edges here. I'm just heating up a little bit at a time. I don't want to have a lot of extra glass on there. It's easier to keep control of just having as much as you need, and I don't want to go over the edges. So I'm watching carefully to make sure it stays within the pie area. So now we have glass where we need it to form up that crust there. And I'm going to heat the rest of the bead first before I get into the ivory edge. The bottom crust, the sides of the pie, 
And I'm going to go slowly. See how I'm angling this underneath the plane? I'm trying to keep the mandrel out of the plane and just get the glass in the plane. So as I do it, I'm just going to barely touch with the flat side. And you've got a lot of other different tools on the market that would do the same thing. I'm just flattening it. So heating the area and trying to even out the crust a little bit. Improving my baking skills, one piece of glass at a time. Okay, and you have smaller tools that might get into some of those crevices a little bit better for heating. Use them, use whatever tools make you most comfortable. Okay, so see how that's smooth there? We still have an upper crust to take care of and some lattice work. So I'm going to, going to look around and see, do I have any chill marks on this I need to take care of? We have lattice and then we have the crust that comes out this way. So for the crust that comes out that way, <laughs> well, we got experience with that, don't we? I'm just gonna lay a little bit of glass and you can use your stringer if that's easier or your rod. And I'm gonna go right across there with some extra glass. And I see that I've got a little more on this side than this side. I'm gonna try and even it up a little bit. So I'm adding a little bit to this side, just trying to make it even. We aren't gonna crimp that yet. We're gonna wait until after we've done the, um, the crisscross lattice part, but we are going to keep everything nice and warm, not hot, but warm. Okay, so now we have this part, and we wanted, we're going to make lines in each direction. I'm left-handed, so I'm going to start at this end, and I'm just going to lay it down this very soft plane, leave it raised, and stop when I get to the edge there. I want to go from edge to edge. So I'm going to do the next one, and I'm going to leave plenty of space in between them. Just lay them down. I like dark ivory, using dark ivory especially because it looks just a little bit more baked. That one I went up a little bit high on that. We'll fix that. One more. So you could also even encase ivory in some amber. That could look pretty nice also. And this part I'm not crazy about right there. So I'm just pulling a little bit of that off from the end. Did you see what I did? Hang on a sec. Let me heat up the rest of the bead. And don't you forget to heat up the rest of your bead. And I'm going to heat up just that area there. And just because this is soft, pull it off a little bit. And if you've got a good tool for nudging, you can nudge things around a little bit too. I got lots of nudging tools. We're still going to crimp that area, so I'm not so concerned. However, here's the thing. If you need to straighten something out, because it's raised, you can take your tweezers and do it. See how you can make things just a little bit more even that way? Okay, so let's heat up the rest of the bead and then we're going to add our uh, lattice in the other direction. But first, let's make sure everything's nice and warm. Okay, so if you have too much on the end, you can always just pull some off on the end of your mandrel, get rid of some blobs. And I just want to kind of connect them. I'm not perfect at this, but it will sure give the idea of it being lattice. So I take one edge and I very gently heat this and have it go to the other edge. Plain cut. And see how orange that is there? I want to let that cool down before I go anywhere near that so it doesn't all melt together without my permission. Okay, so I stop there. Let's go 
out this side. A little more. Stop. Let it cool over there. Warm up other areas that need a little heat. Okay, take off blobs on the end of your stringer. So you see you can go with a smaller stringer if that's easier for you. In case stringer sometimes makes it easier. But see how it's giving it a lattice look? That's what you're going for. Let's do just one more little one across there. Okay, I'd say that's enough lattice. It, it certainly looks like lattice that way. Now normally, well first let's crimp this and then I'll show you the last thing. There are a couple of ways to crimp it. You can take tweezers, you can take needle nose pliers, you can take specific tools for it. You can do it however you want. You can even add one more layer of pie crust if you want it extending a little bit more make this a little bit higher it'll be a little easier to work with that way so I just added a little bit more and I'll use my needle nose pliers I'm going in and heating just the top the pie crust area and I'm going to go in and smush and give it just a little turn Let's go a little farther down smush and give it a little twist of my I'm just twisting my wrist a little bit Heating it up, twisting my wrist. Heating up the area, twisting my wrist, always in the same direction. It's just like if you were making a real pie crust, but I don't know how many of you have had the opportunity to do that. So if you get to make a pie, make it however you want, but see how it gives it just a little bit of that fluting like pies have. Okay, so normally, I don't know about you, but I like to eat my pie with ice cream, and usually it's vanilla ice cream. However, your vanilla ice cream would look the same because I would use this ivory again, and it wouldn't show up as much on your pie crust that you've made. So maybe we should add some whipped cream instead. And to add whipped cream, I hadn't planned on this in advance, but I would use some white that is encased with uh, transparent clear. So we're going to add just a little bit of that, some whipped cream uh, to this, just so you know how to do it. And maybe you're going to want to make a blueberry pie instead, or an apple pie. And I certainly have made a lot of little pumpkin pies. I don't make apple pies because they're too close in the crust color, and I like, I like some difference. So I've got a little plop of the transparent and white, and I made a little ball there. And if I want it to continue up a little bit more, I can add a little bit and just kind of spread it out and give it a little bit of a twirl. And I'm just twirling it a little bit and pulling it up. So now we have whipped cream on our cherry pie. You see that? You see the side view, see the bottom and the edge. So this, my friends, is the cherry pie that you just made. And of course, that red, which looks black now, will be a gorgeous red tomorrow when the kiln finishes with it. Thanks for joining me. This is Marcy Lamberson, and don't forget, to uh, subscribe below and you know that little bell thing there if you want to see whenever I have something new click on that and it will give you a notification of that and you can find me on Facebook and Instagram under Marcy Lamberson or maybe in classes around the United States or abroad I teach Lambert too. Take care everyone. Thanks for joining me. Bye.